What's up, YouTube? It's day seven. Uh, it's me, TJ, your absolute mad lad of an AOC video content generating machine. This is video number four today for me. I've already finished these. I didn't solve all of these today, just to be clear, although it would have been sweet if I was that smart, but that's fine. Today, we're working on day seven. Let's get right to the code. So in this problem, you're effectively given some locations. And what you want to do is you want to find the location that is the minimum cost for all of the crabs at each of these spots to line up. Now, it's good that this is a crab problem because we're using rust. I could use more crab problems. I'm just saying crab engineering equals rust solve easy peasy. But regardless, we see that we need to move these and try and find the minimum costing position. So in this case, uh, they show you the example for this sequence of numbers and the end result ends up being position two with a total cost of 37. And they're asking how much fuel must they spend. So basically we're just going to sum up all the costs for each of these. And so that's what the solution is. Now there's some very fancy solutions that end up being literally one line of code, but I can't couldn't figure those out by myself. I just found it out later by reading through what some people were talking about because I was like, surely there's actually a shortcut for this one. Like I recognize that this seems like the kind of problem, I, uh, but I didn't solve it by myself. I'll just be honest about that chat. So, okay, here we go. Solution, we're going to split the line. Seven dot example looks kind of like this is just a list of numbers. So we're going to get all those numbers, put them in a vector. What I did was I found the minimum number and the maximum number. And I searched a binary, tr basically a binary search of the cost. And I used a binary search on the list of my items. So what's kind of weird here that you might not understand on first glance is that for cost in part one, part two, the only difference between part one and part two is the cost sort of calculation. So I made two different functions that both look like this. They take a puzzle that takes in the vector, the puzzle itself, right? And the destination, and then it calculates the cost. For part one, it's literally just the sum of all the distances that need to be traveled. So you can just calculate that out by iterating over the puzzle, folding it down with the distance and, accum and adding the accumulator. Bada boom, bada bing, you've got the cost. So I figure out what the cost on the left is, the cost on the right, and then I do a search. Binary search, you always got to have your base case here where we turn left or right depending on which one's lower. Otherwise, we check if to the left is cheaper or to the right is cheaper. And then we search either on the left or right correspondingly. So this just keeps on calling search until we get to our base case. Nothing really that complicated here. The other solution, which is also super easy and would have been faster to write by a lot, is just literally this solution here where... Um, all you do is you just iterate over all the values and you just see which one is the lowest and then you select that one. That's all. One thing that's kind of cool about it in Rust is you could make it an option instead and you can have two different cases here where when it's none, you always put in the cost and then otherwise you compare the searches. I thought that was kind of cool. Like I liked this sort of strategy in other language, maybe you'd have to put nil or like you'd have to do the first calculation out here and then you change your bounce. That's whatever. You can just write it this way. And I think it's a pretty nice little way to, to do that problem. This will get you the same answer, um, but you're going to calculate more things as M gets larger. But either way, it was still really fast for me. And then the last bit, this is the part that I didn't know offhand, but when I was reading about this later, because I had an intuition that there would be some mathematical construct for this, it turns out part one is literally just the median. So you can test that on your example if you want, and you can get the median, and then you'd be all set. For part two, the difference is in the cost in that now, instead of just costing one fuel in this sort of constant rate burn, it's each change of one step in the horizontal position costs one more unit of fuel than the last. So first step costs one, second step costs two, first costs three. So the naive way that you would implement this cost would be by doing something like just literally adding up all those values. But this sequence actually is equivalent to n times n plus one divided by two. You can look up the proof for this if you want. There's people that are going to be a lot better at explaining this and showing you a cool graph and everything. But this is a kind of pattern that you may want to recognize 
in these problems because it definitely comes up and this will save you a lot of calculation, right? Because now it's um, much more like constant time to calculate all these instead of sort of like an factorial time. I don't even know. It's a long time to calculate this if you don't know the shortcut and you have large numbers. So when you do it this way, you can do exactly the same thing for my code because I just accepted that a different cost function could get passed in. In the search, you could do exactly the same thing here. You just switch which cost it is. And it turns out that for part two, you the mean is effectively the best way to search for it. The problem is the mean isn't guaranteed to be an integer. So what you need to do if you were actually to do this part is that the mean will be some number. And what you need to do is check the floor and the ceiling of that float value and find out which of those two is the cheapest value. So you can change it from being sort of like this would be O of N and this is maybe O of log N. You could just change it to O of one. You just always check two values and then you're done. That's pretty cool. Um, those aren't super apparent to me. And I just wanted to try writing sort of like a search style thing in Rust. So I went with this way, but that's it. That is day seven. I hope you enjoyed and I, you should really tune in for day eight's video. Okay. Bye everybody.